Well, hello everybody. My name is Ron Kanzler, and uh, man, we are super excited you decided to join us for Disciple Making Church podcast in January 2023. And man, I'm super excited to be here with uh, Ken Adams, the founder and director of Impact Ministries, also the lead pastor of Crossroads Church. So, Ken, welcome. Thank you, Ron. It's good, good to, to have you, man. And uh, Mike Keaton over here on my right, and uh, he is uh, the executive pastor of Crossroads Church, but also a big part of Impact as a consultant and uh, as I said, my name is Ron, I'm part of Impact, and thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, Happy New Year to you. Um, hopefully, uh, you're keeping up all of your New Year's resolutions. What about you, Ken? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good so bad. far. Yeah. All right. What about you, Mike? Doing great. I didn't make any, so I'm doing really good. <laughs> well, we hope that you guys are doing well on that as well. Um, but thank you for making this a priority. Um, every single month, we come to you and uh, we have some conversations about about church life, but really more specifically about being and building disciples uh, in the local church, not the way we do it, Ken and Mike, but the way Jesus did it. And so we thank you so much for being a part of this today. Um, We just ask you to like us, share us, uh, because today we're going to talk about something that's super important, um, leadership. But before we get to that, we just want to, uh, I think all of us here would want to invite everybody to something really exciting coming up at the end of this month. And uh, that's our Disciple Making Summit. And so uh, you can go to impactdisciples.com. You can check that out. You can look and see. We've got some exciting speakers coming up. Uh, we've got some breakout sessions. Um, so, Ken, what are some of the breakout sessions that we're going to have? Yeah, we're going to do, uh, first of all, we're going to do a pre-summit. Yeah, pre-summit. A pre-summit yeah. on uh, Friday morning. And we're going to have uh, a student breakout that's put on by Sun Life Ministries. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to do a, uh, a discipleship uh women uh, discipleship group and then we're going to break out our pre-conference so we'll do one for pastors disciple making pastors and then the disciple making church so yeah. uh, there'll be uh, those will be uh, earlier in the day we'll start yeah. around nine or ten o'clock different kind of check out the website for the times and then uh, that evening we kick it off with our main session and uh, Doug Holiday will be speaking mm. and then uh, we'll come back on uh, Saturday morning and uh, Chris Moody will be speaking from uh, First Baptist Church in Beaumont. And then that afternoon, uh, Scott Sullivan from the Georgia Baptist Convention Discipleship uh, Department will be a part of that. And then some of our breakouts will be uh, breakouts. Uh, you'll be doing one yep. on uh, sort of like uh, transformation through life-changing uh, discipleship. Life-changing it's be discipleship. Good. Yep. And then we'll have a pastor's panel. We'll have a student ministry panel. Uh, we'll have a women's ministry panel. And then um, a couple of others. We have one for... Uh, uh, really kind of a young adult college student type yeah. type breakout and young adult breakout. So uh, we've got a number of things. We have a men's breakout that will be done as well. So we've got about six breakouts that will be, I think, beneficial for um, really just about anybody. You, just, you don't have to be a church leader to uh, benefit from this. You can yeah. be, a, uh, you know, just a member of a church, be a part of a church. Be something for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, January 27th and 28th. Um, so you can still go to our website. You can sign up. Mm-hmm. Man, the cost is minimal, but the uh, benefit are going to be amazing as you go into this new year. Um, and so uh, we look forward to maybe seeing you there. But uh, really today what we're going to dive in on as we think about how do we make fully trained disciples inside the local church. Um, man, guys, it really does come down to what we're going to talk about today is leadership. Mm. And uh Leadership, many times we think is is it is, and it is it's the the senior pastor. But uh, what happens inside that church really is developed and grown based on growing leadership. And so uh, today, uh, man, you know we're just going to talk about the importance of leadership. But really, we're going to be maybe answering the question that some of you like to know: How do you develop leaders? Mm-hmm. And not just leaders, but how did Jesus develop leaders? So, so guys, let's kind of kick this thing off. And so, a couple of questions. That I think would be good for us would be this. So, you know, what are some of the challenges? Um, maybe you guys were wondering some of the challenges of selecting leaders in churches today. So, what do you think, Ken? What yeah. are some of the challenges? Well, let me back up just for a second, okay. and then I'll come back to your question a little bit. So, you know, I, when I talk to, and I say this a lot when yeah. I'm uh, training and stuff, and I, I, I've come to the realization that a lot of people, a lot of pastors, uh, really leadership is one of their greatest needs you mm. know and they don't a lot of times you say what some of your great uh, great challenges in your church they don't usually say buildings or budget sometimes they do but not sure. as much but almost hands down they all say i need more leaders mm-hmm. and then when you ask the question well where are you going to get them from they they don't know yeah and so 
uh, it's amazing to me how we we are in charge of leading this organization with the greatest mission on the planet, yeah. and yet we don't really know. Uh, in a lot of cases, we don't know how to define it. We don't know what a leader looks like if we made one. Mm. And then secondly, is that we don't really have a process or a plan mm. to make them. So, um, so man, I think it, I think it is huge that we understand how we go about developing leaders and then deploying leaders. And as always, Ron, it goes back to um, to how did Jesus do that? Mm-hmm. And so I think one of the biggest challenges that we have mm. is just um, really going back and figuring out uh, how does that look mm. and making it a priority again. You know, yeah. a lot of times uh, we have just forgotten how important it is and really kind of lost taking our eye off the ball of you know if we're not raising up new leaders and we don't have a plan and we don't have a process then we got a problem yeah so yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely so um yeah so it really is important i mean the challenge you know i think we would say the same thing maybe some of you would say that uh, one of your greatest challenges is um leaders and so um, I don't know about, about you, but uh, when we think about where we're going to find these leaders, Mike, what uh, what are some of the places that sometimes we, where do we find them? Where do we develop them from? So, honestly, uh, they're they're right there in front of us. Mm-hmm. They really are. You know, um, every week, it's in, so in our churches, so in a church context, mm-hmm. every week people show up mm-hmm. and come. And, you know, um, if we are all about the mission, mm-hmm. uh, Jesus' mission, doing ministry the way Jesus did, then, you know, those people that assembled there week after week, I mean, they are the ones that need to be discipled and grown and developed and yeah. then later deployed. Yeah. And so, honestly, they're, they're really right in front of us. Mm. So yeah. we just have to, uh, and I think Ken said it best, you know, we just kind of skimmed over it, but, I, you know, we have to know what a leader needs to look like, mm. and then we got to figure out this process. You know, how are we going to develop them? So yeah. we have an assembly every week, you know, a crowd gathering yeah. that, okay, how do you take that crowd and then eventually move some of them yeah. into, you know, leading, yeah. you know, and that's what Jesus did is we just got to. Yeah. So Mike, what I hear you saying is, you know, God has provided potential leaders, but, but Ken, really the question is, how did Jesus do it? Well, you know, when you said, what are some of the challenges? Mm. And I got to say this, mm. that one of the challenges is just tradition. Mm. And the way we've always done it, right? Yeah. yeah. And you know, I, I've said this a, a time or two that you know one of the biggest problems we have in the church today is that we select leaders on political qualifications mm-hmm. rather than spiritual qualifications, right. and rather than really having a plan to develop potential leaders or future leaders, uh, we really just take. Uh, we just take people that have been around a long time right. and maybe have the right last name or the right bank account or the right job. And and even the way we select leaders, you know, we let, uh, because we mo- a lot of churches have a congregational form of government, mm. we pass out a form to everybody in the church of people that are 21 years of age or older that have been members for a couple of years. And we say, now pick who's going to be our deacons or our leaders or our elders. And yeah. that's doesn't square up with scripture it doesn't square up with the biblical approach to leadership in scripture where there are clearly biblical qualifications for for leaders and that Mm. would even be Sunday school teachers small group leaders ministry team leaders Mm. you know all those areas there there a person ought to be in leadership because they are qualified and they demonstrate um, they really demonstrate certain characteristics and certain types of conduct yeah. that qualifies them, yeah. uh, not just uh, personality, not yeah. just uh, you know their circumstances in life. So there's a lot of challenges. And you know when Jesus mm. developed leaders, so he got his leaders out of the harvest. Mm. You know, Jesus did not um, get leaders from the church down the street because <laughs> there was no church down the street, right? Oh, yeah. And so Jesus literally started this is amazing right so he takes this little ragtag group of fishermen and tax collectors they're just they're just unschooled ordinary men the bible says mm. and that group of guys becomes over a period of time that group of guys becomes the leadership team 
that he would entrust the entire movement of Christianity to. Right. That is in itself, just let that resonate for a while, mm -hmm. is that Jesus developed a group of 12 guys to become the leaders, and they were uneducated, ordinary, common, salt-of-the-earth guys. But he got them there because he had a process, mm -hmm. and that process is called discipleship. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so the best leadership, if you want to know how Jesus did it, the best leadership always comes out of discipleship. Hmm. That's right. That's fantastic. So, yeah, so Jesus wasn't just, did, you know, checking, did they have a pulse? Jesus right. had a very strategic plan. He, uh, when he launched his ministry, he, he specifically prayed and chose those men. And, and ultimately, as you just said, Ken, they, we're sitting here today talking about it because those men did what Jesus called them to That's do. That's exactly right. And so as we think about that, um, you know, as Jesus kind of de deployed and, and developed and deployed his uh, his leaders, you know, Mike. What, what was the what was the Jesus style strategy for doing that? What did that look like in in uh, Jesus's plan? So you know, there's different um, ways you could look at that. I mean, there's different parts of our strategy here at our church the way we mm. do it. Um, some people say it's a four step process. Some say it's five step. I mean, different things. I mean, honestly, when Jesus said in Matthew four nineteen, "Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men." Mm. That's a process, yeah. Mm -hmm. From following to fishing, mm -hmm. right? And then you go to Mark three fourteen, where G, where it says that he appointed some of them apostles that they might be with him, mm -hmm. that he might send them out to preach, right? Mm -hmm. There's a process right there, mm -hmm. yeah. right? He chose them, they've spent time together, and then he launched them, yeah. And then John twenty twenty one, where he says he walks into the upper room after his resurrection, and he says, "As the Father sent me, so send I you." Mm -hmm. I mean, that was his intention from the beginning, right? Right. It wasn't just, hey, let's get in this little holy huddle, do discipleship for the rest of our lives. I mean, his intention was to launch them as leaders, Yeah. you know? So, I mean, he spent time with these guys. He got to know them. He eventually pulled them in close. They became his disciples. He called them apostles. Mm. He trained them. Mm. There's all kind of aspects to the training all throughout the Gospels. Yeah. And then eventually he gave them the ball. And he said, okay, now it's your turn. Go, make disciples. Yeah. And I honestly, I, I just don't think Peter looked over at John and said, hmm, what do you think he meant by that? <laughs> I think they knew what he meant. Yeah. He'll, we'll just do what he did with us. Yeah. So uh, that is the process. I mean, and that's a really bird's eye overview of it, you know. Right. But those are the big picture uh, principles of it, I think. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, man, that's it's a, a great way to describe it. Um, you know, we say often here at our church and, and with Impact that uh, everything rises and falls on leadership, mm -hmm. that uh, the direction of the church. And Jesus knew that. And, and so I think it should be encouraging to know Jesus took, what, these unschooled, ordinary men. And then ultimately we see in the book of Acts as they stand before the Sanhedrin uh, and are challenged, the thing that they they uh, associate them with for the change was their time with Jesus, mm -hmm. their leadership they exhibited. And so uh, what can be encouraging for, for you today is to know that uh, Jesus has given us a really clear strategy mm -hmm. to develop leaders. And so, um, so well, Ken, would you like to... Before, you, before you go on, yeah. let me just say, say one thing just for our, our viewers' sake, you know, just to be practical. Yeah. Um, how did Jesus do it? I mean, there's, there is a lot to the process, but I think the, a very simple answer is a small group. Mm. Jesus mm. did it in the context of a small group. Yeah. So that's where the discipleship that Ken was talking about comes from. Yeah. So you want to add anything? Well, you know, I, I heard it said years ago, and it has just resonated with me and shaped a lot of what we do here in our church, and obviously through uh, Impact Ministry, is that Jesus made disciples, and then he appointed them to be leaders. Mm. And so, you know, it's a very different mindset of leadership development and yeah. even deploying leaders. And, you know, what, what actually happens is when you start um, making disciples, you're, you're creating a pipeline mm. uh, that eventually creates more leaders than you need. Yeah. And so you actually have, at some point, you could have leaders in waiting. You could have potential leaders that have already sort of gone through the process of leadership development because they've been discipled. So yeah. you got to see leader, you got to see discipleship ultimately as ministry training. Right. And discipleship is not just mm. going deeper or just taking a class or just, it's, it's, it's training, it's training for ministry. Yeah. And it's driven by the mission of making disciples. I think that's one thing, Ron, that, mm. that, and you and I've talked about this a lot, that, that every church has leaders. Right. 
So every church has leaders. They just don't all have the right kind of leaders. Mm. And sometimes they have, I mean, how would you, how, how in the world can we have leaders that are not living or doing or ever even have any connection to the mission? Yeah. Wow. What yeah. a mess that would be. Mm-hmm. If you had, if you had our military that was being led by uh, generals and, 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 you know, you know, officers that had no idea what our mission was. Mm. If you had a school system that was being led by administrators and teachers that had no idea what the goal of education was. If you, mm. you, you just, it, you name it. I mean, yeah. and, and yet we think it's somehow or another it's different for the church. Yeah. It's not. Mm-mm. It's not. And so uh, we have to understand that when, when you go from the Gospels to mm. Acts, you go from leadership development to leadership Mm. deployment yeah. yeah really right exactly yeah. develop and deploy yeah well I mean he, they, he moved them from disciples they were called disciples and then in Acts they're apostles yeah. Yeah. so it's two different distinctions right there yeah absolutely that's right yeah so maybe you're listening to this and you're thinking okay good stuff guys and um, you know so what next I'm, I'm, I'm at a small church or I, I, I just I'm not looking around and I'm I'm just wondering you know, like where are these leaders going to come from and I think we talked about it that it came out of the harvest, um, but the reality is Jesus took what God gave him and he poured into it and multiplied it. And I think that's what we can uh, we can take from today. And so, um, you know, the reality is is that we just would like to encourage you that um, you know the thing that Jesus shows us is is that um, we we have as many leaders as we're willing to develop. Really, mm-hmm. the that's leaders right. that you the leaders that you that's right. are, are thinking about are, that's right. are potentially already in your church, or they will be in your church soon. They may not. The, the next generation of leaders may not have even shown that, up. That's yet. right. But it's a mindset change that, mm-hmm. uh, and that was big for me personally, guys. Mm-hmm. Was people I was discipling. I began to see them not just as someone that I was spending time with, but future leaders mm-hmm. inside the church and saying, hey, they're fishermen today. I mean, they're fishing for fish, but one day they're going to fish for men. Mm-hmm. Jesus was casting that vision of these leaders. Yeah, and you know, Ron, i got to say this, because I, 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 I never really want our podcast to be one of those things where people just get, you know, more content and mm-hmm. don't know what to do with it, yeah. right? We don't want to do that. We want yeah. to, the whole idea of a Disciple Making Church podcast is to try to help you get a feel for, how a church can literally implement that's right the disciple making ministry of christ and so you know what i would encourage a a pastor to do if he's out there saying how do Mm. i get this started what do i do you know uh first thing i would do is i would look for a handful of hungry individuals Mm. that uh i thought i could meet with on a regular basis and that uh, i could pour into them and i could teach them and i could train them and then I would create that group that you were talking about, Mike. I'd create a discipleship group, and I would give them a, uh, you know, we obviously we create a lot of resources, but it, whether you use our resources or not doesn't matter. Uh, we just provided them so that it's easy to reproduce and do. But mm. um, but what I would do is I would just be teaching them the, the conduct, I mean the content of God's Word. I'd be teaching them the truth of God. I'd be teaching them you know, the basic fundamentals. And mm. then I would also, though, I would teach them the character of Christ and I would teach them the conduct of Christ mm-hmm. and then over a period of time I would actually know they, they would prove themselves mm-hmm. to be uh, possible leaders yes. and then it's it's uh, at that point I would be challenging them to go out and do the same thing with other people and quite honestly if you do that long enough uh, the, the leadership titles that come with that in some ways are are actually irrelevant you know mm. uh, that's why you know years ago you used to hear John Maxwell say all the time leadership is influence and so what you really want to do is you just want to have a whole church full of people that are influencing people mm. to be disciples and to build disciples yeah and so don't make it more complicated than it really is that's right uh, that's more than anything just get started just yeah just get started and, and and obviously you know I, we're doing impact uh, not because we don't have enough to do already. I mean, we got a full throttle church here with lots of stuff going on. But based on what we have learned out of 33 years, going on 34 years of really trying to figure it out, and we're just swinging at it really hard. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, praise God, we've learned a few things. And 
we just want to share that with other people, mm, help right. them figure it out. We don't have the, you know, the secret sauce or the, you know, the code broke. We hadn't broke code, but we have learned some things. We love to share that with mm-hmm. other churches and man, have us come in. Let us do a seminar. Let us consult with you. And you know, as always, uh, we will make it possible for you to do that. Uh, finances will not be uh, will not be an obstacle for us coming and helping your church. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good segue into really just thank you so much for being here. Uh, we genuinely hope this has helped you today. And um, uh, we, we truly, if, if we can in any way, would like to help you. You can go to impactdisciples.com. Um, you can drop a note below here. We'll reach back out to you. Uh, as Ken said, we can come in, do some consultations. We can do some Zoom calls. Uh, whatever we can do to help you, uh, we'll be, uh, be glad to do that. And uh, one last reminder, one of the best things you can do to really jumpstart even this idea of leadership and other disciple making things that go with your church. To do church like Jesus did is to come to our, you know, our disciple making summit. Uh, it's uh, the 27th and 28th. Uh, man, we'd love to see you there. Um, but if not, we'll see you next time. And uh, until then, continue to be and build disciples of Jesus Christ. <laughs>